Hello everybody, my name is Dalton Nelson and today I'd like to talk about a game I just beat. That game being Katamari Damacy Reroll for the Nintendo Switch. Katamari Damacy Reroll is a remaster of a 2004 game called Katamari Damacy, which was originally directed by Keita Takahashi. That game was developed and published by Namco. Reroll's remastering was done by a developer called MonkeyCraft. The remaster was published by Bandai Namco Entertainment. Katamari Damacy Reroll is a third-person platforming action game. In the multitude of classic video games I've never played before, Katamari Damacy belonged to that mix because of its PlayStation 2 exclusivity. I've known about the original, its style, and its mechanics for a while now. I've also known about Katamari Damacy's reputation amongst the video games community and how well-liked the game is. So when a remaster of the game got announced last year, I was excited to finally experience this Namco classic. After playing the game, there were a couple of things that surprised me, some good, some bad. Starting with the style and look of Katamari Damacy Reroll, the game is very colorful. It has a cartoony and animated style to it. If there is one word that could be used to describe Katamari Damacy's style, it is distinguishable. There are things like all of the character design, which feel inspired. For example, there is the King of Cosmos, whose size is huge, and his look is strange, with a very muscular physique, a very well-defined face, and a very detailed cylindrical-shaped head. Another well-designed character in the game is the Prince, who you will be playing as. The Prince is very cute, as he is small. He also has a very cute face to him. And unlike the flat ends of the King of Cosmos's head, the Prince has a capsule-shaped head instead and thus, his design comes off as way more friendly. Of course, the settings are also very well designed. They are all grounded in reality, but feel as if they come out of the imagination. The house, for example, feels gigantic at first, with going around the table taking up time, but as you collect more and more, and as your ball becomes bigger, the house starts to feel small and claustrophobic. The gatherable items in the game also have a great variety to them. As I was finished playing through the game, I had collected over 1,000 different kinds of items, each with their own distinct names and descriptions. The low polygonal models can also give off a toy-like charm to some of the items, like the humans, who look absolutely silly in this game. Finally, absurdist humor and events that are spread throughout the game also drive the unique quality of the game. Now, how Katamari Damacy reroll controls is actually different from how I thought the game would control. I thought you controlled the ball, but you actually control from the perspective of the prince. The majority of the controls are handled using both sticks. For example, moving forward, you hold up both sticks. Moving diagonally, you hold the sticks on a diagonal. To strafe, you push the sticks to the side. To turn, you push a stick down in the direction you want to turn. For example, turning left, you would have to push the left stick down while holding the right stick up. Finally, there is turning around completely, which is to click in both of the sticks. Outside of stick control, there are other buttons to use. For example, there is looking in the first person mode or jumping high up in the air to get a better view. Now, you can't talk about Katamari Damacy without talking about its soundtrack. The soundtrack is bubbly and fun and energetic. There are tracks like Katamari on the Rocks, which is an energetic track which has a nice vocal na-na harmony for a hook. Or The Moon and the Prince, which has this glitchy beat with this rap spoken word fusion over it, which also transition into a very smooth hook. And finally there are tracks like Lonely Rolling Star, which is a happy, sunny, and bubbly piece that sounds like the best day ever. However, going further into the audio is where my problems with the game begin. Reroll is one of the loudest games I have ever played, and I do not mean that by volume. What I mean is that there are many sounds mixed into the soundscape here, making the game audibly busy at times. This is not a game for those who hate constant noise. There was one sound in particular that I found obnoxious, and that was the sound that he chose for the King of Cosmos' talking. His talking audio is a lot like a game like Banjo-Kazooie, where, in that game, it's a single sound being chopped up and played at either different times or pitches. So the sound they chose for the King of Cosmos' talking audio was a record scratching. The constant high screeches from the scratches, at times, 
gave me a headache, and I ended up skipping a lot of his dialogue completely every time he talked. Staying with the King of Cosmos, another thing within the game that I found particularly obnoxious was where the King's dialogue box popped up during gameplay. It pops up right in the middle of the screen, obstructing the player's view. One might argue that a big and important character trait of the King of Cosmos is his obnoxiousness and his overall rude quality. And I understand and welcome that as a character trait. But at no point does that make affecting the player's experience in a negative way such as this okay. Plus, here is the reality of the situation when it comes to the UI and the placement of this specific dialogue box. You see, the UI is already busy as is. All four corners of the screen are already being used. The top left holds the ball and size goal, the top right holds the timer, the bottom left holds the item collection display, and the bottom right displays the prince's visual. All four of these pieces are also moving, making them more drawing for the eye. When the UI is structured in this specific way, it makes a vignette effect, where the middle of the screen becomes even more prominent. So when the king's dialogue box pops up in the middle of the screen, it's extremely obstructive and breaks the most important line of sight in the game. Breaking away from that criticism, I also found reroll kind of stressful at times. The combination of timed stages mixed with a set goal makes things feel very urgent. But I can't really think of any of those elements I would either change or get rid of. Both are really important, so maybe my reaction to this only applies to me. I also found that controlling the ball in the game could be a bit more troublesome. When picking objects up, the ball becomes uneven, and thus does not roll smoothly. Picking up an oblong object, like a fence, makes controlling the ball worse, as the object will stick out of the ball and mess with the ball's trajectory. In fact, a lot of the game's difficulty can be attributed to fighting with the ball for control. Finally, there were more than a couple points in the game in which I would just get stuck. I wish MonkeyCraft had put some sort of failsafe for the player if they got stuck, where the ball would reset to a position or something similar to that. Instead, if you get stuck, chances are you are losing a lot of your ball and will have to start this stage over again. However, despite all those things that I didn't really like within the game, I enjoyed Katamari Damacy Reroll overall. It's got a fun style, with a fun soundtrack, with a fun concept. Once you get the hang of the controls, the game becomes really simple and fun. I'm going to give Katamari Damacy Reroll a final score of a 7 out of 10. I think wrestling with the ball, the overwhelming audio, and the moments that I would get stuck brought the game down for me, but I would still recommend the game overall. That concludes my review of Katamari Damacy Reroll. If you like my reviews, you can like, comment, or subscribe. I also have social media links down in the description below, as well as a link to my portfolio where you can see game design works that I have done. So, with that out of the way, please make sure to have a nice day.